All right, so what we finna do right now, I'm finna pull up some clips. And uh, only one of them is, what? Well, you can explain the moment. Cause uh, yeah, this first one, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I've said this in a previous reaction video of yours. So like, it's gonna sound weird. I don't know if it's gonna sound weird. I don't know if you uh, like, but like when I was seeing this, when I was like uh, 18 or 19, 17, 18, 19, this type of killing was scary to me. <laughs> <laughs> scary. Like, it was scary to me. That, that's that, old that, clip. I, I don't know how to explain it, but that that's so uh yeah, this is the first clip. This is uh yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. What's that uh that's Koji. Yep, yep. Uh let me know if the volume's good though. I don't know. If I Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I don't know how many wrist cramps I did trying to do that groove. <laughs> <laughs> now whose drum kit was that was that that was just a drum kit there at uh at kojic is that i think that was a was a yamaha kit i think that was a yamaha kit so you need me to pause it <laughs> I mean, we can watch as much as you want to watch. I mean, <laughs> okay, well, this, this part, this part. <laughs> Do you know that opening almost started a praise break? Like, I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> That. Uh -uh. Man, so it was a number of quite a quite a few things. First of all, uh, Fred got booked for this. I, somebody else was supposed to play that musical that night, and uh, Fred got called to do the Kojic musical at the last minute. And Philip Feaster, who was my keyboard player, and uh, was doing a live recording for his church. He's doing a live recording for his church and he couldn't do it. And uh, the band was me, Philip, Lawrence, Jones on guitar and mm -hmm. uh, and Snoop. And so Fred is like, uh, I can't tell him no. I told him, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so Calvin, you got to get a You're going to have to get a keyboard player. And so I'm like, all right. So I call my buddy Cornell Thigpen, who's on keyboard on that clip. Cornell Thigpen's from from Chicago, and then lived in Milwaukee for a little while. Um, Cornell passed a few years ago. Not long, actually, his anniversary of passing is um, this week, I believe, this week. Um, but he passed a few years back. We toured together with I uh, with the Isley Brothers. I had him with me for the Isleys for a little while. Um, but Cornell played with Babyface in the Ricky Lawson band. Um, he's a phenomenal. He was he was a phenomenal musician, just incredible. Mm -hmm. But um, I had Cornell playing for Fred before Philip, and then Cornell landed the Stevie Nicks gig, which is the girl from uh, Fleetwood Mac. Um, so Cornell landed the Stevie Nicks gig, and then had to leave, and that's when I got Philip from there. So, um, but. Philip couldn't do this thing because his church was doing a live session and he was using Lawrence. So I'm like, Fred's like, hey man, I gotta I I, I need a band. <laughs> Try me a band. So I called Cornell. 
I didn't call him. I didn't bother. I'm like, man, we're going to three-piece it out. It's a midnight musical. So it was the first thing. Another thing was that Philip usually usually ran Pro Tools Okay. Um, on the gig. So Mike Burrell is sitting behind me running Pro Tools because when we played the opening song, the first song, I sat I set the Pro Tools rig on a chair behind me, but the guys were doing so much jumping behind me, <laughs> the computer kept stopping. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so Mike Burrell came and sat behind me. He grabbed my computer, came and sat behind me, and I'm having him trigger the pro the the sessions. That's why you hear Fred going, "Wait, wait." Wait. So oh. when you hear friends say, but look at your neighbor and say they that wait. Cause usually when he say they that and I usually then Philip usually goes boom. Oh. But I'm telling Mike, I'm like, start, but Mike doesn't know the song. He looking through the he flipping through the through the marker list trying to find they that wait. <laughs> Cause we all over the place at this point. So Fred's like, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> then he starts it. I mean, um wow. Yeah. So that was uh that was a fun night. Um Josh Mayfield is sitting back behind me. And that's Josh, that's Josh Mayfield that after I play that shot, he just does like this. Oh yeah. I, I uh Josh that. Josh is, is is my little brother, man. I and I was introduced to him as he was a kid by um my pastor, Bishop Larry Trotter. And so um uh, Josh is, um, you know, he's sitting back there behind me. He had been killing that night. He's playing with Judith McAllister with the, you mm-hmm. know, with the main band. So, uh, yeah, he had, then, a, I'm, he had his guest drummer <laughs> moment. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't have, and then I, I'm playing with no ears. So, which I usually have ears. So I'm like, I'm looking at Charles Harris who is running everything and I'm like, yo, turn the loops up. Like I'm playing on a wedge. I ain't played on wedges in years. I'm playing on a wedge and you know, so I'm looking at him like, yo, turn, turn, turn it up, turn it up. So um man, that was, you know, it's one of them things like you just get through it. But it was it was a fun night. It was a fun night. Uh you know Okay. I ate some good. I ate some good St. Louis Chinese food that night. That was, might have been the first night somebody brought me St. Louis rice, like Chinaman rice. Like oh, I ain't know nothing about that. But uh, yeah, that's that was uh, that was that was St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That clip. Okay. Let's. Oh, I got. I got another one. I got another one. Uh, let me get out of that. Am I still? I'm still on the thing. Let me do that. All righty. Um. So that we, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna. This is uh this is a quick clip. It's just I'm trying to figure something out. Have you did you ever do a clinic in in New Jersey? Mm-hmm. I've done a couple, I believe. Okay. Uh, let me let me let me put this let me put this on the screen. This is the type of stuff that makes me mad. <laughs> I'm not, even gonna lie. not even gonna lie. Okay. So that's in St. Louis. This is St. Louis. Okay. Woo! That's a old, that's an old clip. When I tell oh you God. this looks exactly like a church I used to go to and play at in New York, New Jersey <laughs> called HPC. I only thought that this was at the same place because Spanky did a clinic in Newark, New Jersey, and it's the same angle, same red carpet, same window, same <laughs> speaker, same flower. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I swear, I'm like, I, I'm 30 minutes away from this church when I was living there, and I ain't getting <laughs> no notification. Or no, no, nobody told me nothing. <laughs> nothing. But uh, yeah, that's that's all I wanted to do uh, talk about. That's a clinic. Uh, I, uh, Kevin Kelly had me come like somewhere. I think Kevin Kelly or Jay Ross maybe had me come to St. Louis and do a clinic there. Yeah. Okay. That's a long time ago. Ooh, okay. Uh, okay. This one right here. I need you to explain this clip. I need you to explain it. I need you to explain what happened, what's going on. 
whose fault it was. And uh, yeah, Let, let's let's get to it. Let's see. I mean, uh, I, well, yeah, where is that? Share screen. I'm almost positive. I know what, <laughs> what you're this, about this to... is titled 2015 Straight Pocket. Oh, no, I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what happened here and what. what... <laughs> <laughs> was that was somebody out of pocket like <laughs> man you know uh let's see okay so this is festival of praise 2015 this is a man that's to this day probably the best this is the the best tour i've ever done this is the most oh. fun i've ever had on a tour musically all the art, the, the artist lineup is. We had Fred, Donnie McClurkin, Hezekiah Walker, Israel Houghton. Mm-hmm. Then we had Israel, Israel Houghton, and Hez switched off on some of the dates, so it was either Hez or Israel. Then we had Kim Burrell, Isaac Curry, Zacardi Cortez, and Jessica Reedy. That tour was in. Same, and that? oh man, that was a long show. Like yeah. it was, it was a three hour show. Okay, we'll it was a three hour show. With it, and it was, so, but I mean, we took an intermission. So, did an hour and a half. I think an hour and a half took an intermission. Did another hour and a half. Um, that was a fun tour, though, man. And man, I would just be, you know, Donnie. Now, Donnie McClurkin likes. He likes all that. He's, he's all he's okay. so so that's us playing hail jesus um mm-hmm. uh, and then we in the intro and donnie we coming out of this big intro where we did i think we did this we did uh let the praise but we had all these hits and stuff and all these uh, this arrangement so we come out of um let the praise with fred and we Explosion, boom, black screen. Then we came in with the, with the, uh, we came in with the um, slide and the family stone sample. And hell, geez, with all the hits and everything. And man, I was just, I'm overplaying and going crazy, having the time of my life, bro. You know, <laughs> that's 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 what that is. That's exactly what that is, man. Okay. <laughs> like Donnie wanted this. Like, wait a no, minute. No, no, I, I mean, I ain't saying it. Like, you know, he Donnie. You know, Donnie definitely likes. You know, he he likes excitement. He likes. You know, he 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 likes you to go for it. He definitely mm-hmm. likes you to go for it. Uh, and that's all I was. I was just. I'm like, man, but I, I mean, I played a lot, I overplayed a lot of music on that tour, which was, I mean, nobody really felt like, nobody really was like, yo, man, come get on chill. But I played more than I usually would, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, maybe it's, I overplayed for, for it to be me, I'm saying that, mm-hmm. you know? But, uh, man, it was a three hour show and it was a lot of hits and, you know, it was dramatics and antics and lighting cues and stuff like that, you know? And, and I was the MD, so I did what I wanted. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. I, I almost forgot to ask, because um, I probably you probably don't have it now, so it's pretty much like a two part question. On one, pretty much, if if you ever got nervous playing in arenas like this. And two, like, what would be what would be your mindset on overcoming something like that? Yeah, man. Um, that tour, I got. I man, I, when I first started playing, and when I first started playing with with, with John P. Key, when I first started playing with Fred Hammond, man, those were some of the most intimidating days of my life because coming out of out of um, 
John P. Key coming going to me from coming from Liddell. This is when really this is kind of for me, like this is when people started kind of pledging their allegiance to not just artists, but their musicians. You know what I'm saying? This was the beginning. That was the beginning, like the beginning of that thing where people started making themselves familiar with not just the artists, but the musicians that were with them. And um, man, I would be getting, I remember my first West Coast run with John P. Keys in like Oakland somewhere. And I was excited. I had never been to the West Coast. I had been to the West Coast before, but not like on a run. Like we played like four cities, four or five cities on the West Coast. And the first night we were in Oakland. And I think this is where I met. I think this might be the first time I met Eric Moore. I think it was the first night I met Eric. Um, um, and we play, um, we play, they had, we were at this theater, they had these curtains. And uh, man, they screaming out, Liddell! 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 Woo! Liddell! <laughs> And finally, John gets in the microphone. And this is before we started the show. So the curtains are closed and they waiting for us to start. And they they hollering, Liddell, Liddell. And finally, John gets in the microphone and goes, Liddell ain't here, Liddell ain't here no more. And man, just as loud as those people were, you heard the entire room go, oh. Like, <laughs> like, it was crazy, bro. And I was like, oh, man, these jokes don't want to hear me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. And, man, they was, they were like, and man, that was a rough night. Um, and then, you know, Marvin McQuitty had a following, bro, and they were devout. <laughs> they were, they were like, they were like cult followers almost, man. And so I remember even when it came out, when people started finding out online that Marvin wasn't with Fred anymore, I was seeing people like talking about it. like this gig just isn't the same anymore. This ain't nobody wants to hear this music with Marvin. And then there were people like, well, I just hope the drummer ain't Calvin Rogers because I'm hearing too much of him right now. <laughs> like, because you know, I was like on a bunch of records then and then. Somebody was like, actually, the new drummer is Calvin Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, but, I, you know, those guys had huge followings, man. And so I would get in some of those rooms. I would get there and people would be looking for them. And some of them, so when they, then when they found out that those guys weren't there, some of them were just there just to see, like, if I was worthy of being on the gig, you know what I'm saying? If I deserve to be on the gig. So they was just waiting to hear me. You know, some of them had their mind made up about me regardless, you know. And you could tell when the guy meets you, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, it's kind of staying off. You know, what's up? Whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, man, I just, uh, you know, I just, I just made it through. I just pushed through, you know. And when, um, when I, when, when I got there, man, you know, when I would be nervous, I would just, I would find somewhere to get, you know, to get in my space and I would just calm myself down, man. And it's like, man, you know, hey, you're exactly where you're supposed to be, bro. And breathe in, breathe out, warm up, play for your, play, play from your heart. Don't play for any of them. And that's what I always did, man. My, my old man was always never play for people, never play for people. So in those instances where I was super nervous and I didn't really know what to do, um, I was just like, I was have anxiety. I'll just find somewhere, get in a small room somewhere, take a deep breath, calm down. And like, man, yo, you're supposed to be here. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And none of them can put you on this gig. None of them can take you off of it. You're here because this is where God has ordained you to be. This is where you're supposed to be. Play from your heart. Like you do every night, get on, get on drums, play, get off, keep it moving, head to the next city. So, yep, that's a, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's better than me just using giant symbols to cover my viewer to cry. <laughs> 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 Which that worked too. <laughs> 
Yep. <laughs> hey man, you know you have like this. <laughs> it's like no matter how emotional the the, the story is, I give you. <laughs> you you gonna come back with something crazy? <laughs> like I'm just saying, I'm like, yeah, man. I just steal away in a small corner, man, and man, I say, man, God, I'm 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 right where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, man, that's, you do that. Or just use gigantic symbols so you can hide. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty good, dog. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, Josh. <laughs> All right. <That's> good. Hey. <laughs> What I what I had to do. <laughs> what I, oh man, that's pretty good. Uh, okay, I had one more clip, but it, like I can, I'm gonna play just maybe 30 seconds of it. I just need to understand like the structure of this and like like who who came up with the idea of this. All right, yeah, this so this solo, like I I get lost every time I hear it. You. you. <laughs> now, now uh there's definitely a lot of clips of this solo even longer yeah and like yeah how did man um uh, just uh so at one point we were playing that song and somebody made mention of uh the teledevil on back um reference and fred was watching it and was like i'm gonna give you a solo on the song okay and so <laughs> i'm like we taking band solos now like who we just like <laughs> why are we doing that uh but uh yeah, man, Fred was it's like, man, we gonna um we gonna, you know, I'm gonna give you a solo here. And then one at one point we used to flip to go go. Like we used to be mm-hmm. like we'd be bang 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 Yeah. Chuck Brown thing, chun, 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 boom. I had to wait to catch that whole thing. But one night, uh, man, we would just said we would just be at Fred's warehouse, and we would be. That was the thing about you know the gig, which is, you know, one thing I appreciate about Ty Tribbett is I still see him continuing it. You don't see a lot of it's it's not a lot of like self contained bands like you know what self contained bands are like. Back in the seventies, that's that's what they would call like cameo and the Gap Band and Earth Wind and Fire. You know what I'm saying? Those are bands where like the the band was the was the was a part of the group. So, um, and now you know you got guys doing things like you know, hey, I'm going to be on the Midwest coast. I'm going to be on the Midwest, you know, side of town. Let me use these set of guys, and then I'm going to be in, uh, you know, I'm being southeast you know, part of the U S let me use these set of guys. And then mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to be down South. I'm going to be on the East coast. I'm going to be on West coast. Um, but it was just something about, you know, and to see Ty Tribbett, you know, in rehearsal still, you know, and just hammering it out with his band, just, you know, vibing, mm-hmm. catching the vibe, you know what I'm saying? That's something that's, uh, and that's what we used to do with Fred. We just used to, we got together, and rehearsed a, a lot. You know what I'm saying? We got, we would, hey man, bring the guys down. Just let's, it's time to put together a new show. Let's, and let's, let's spend some time with it. And Fred just be like, man, let's see what we come up with, you know? So at one point, 
And then we and, and we would change the show up, you know. And so sometimes I was so low on let the praise begin, mm-hmm. you know, and you know that's how it happens. Sometimes you know we would sometimes we we take the songs and speed them way up, you know what I'm saying? Play them faster, you know, or uh, take the songs and uh, flip the bass lines on them, you know, like uh, one time, you know, on like Snoop, Snoop, the song that Snoop wrote with Fred, Awesome God, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we manipulated the bass line and shifted it to like a a 16th note ahead. So the original bass line was boom, and then at one point it's like, so it's like, one, two, do 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 then some kind of way we flipped it to it was like four to one two like we just did everything, you know what I'm saying? And Fred would be like, he was just like, you know, man, we you know. So yeah, uh, but all that stuff, you know, Fred would just be like, man, let's try it. Let's go for it. And that was the cool thing. He was um, he was always open to uh, new ideas. He was always open to doing, uh, you know, doing something different, you know, saying, taking taking the ideas. What happened if we do this? You know, what happened if we do that? So, yeah. 